In the previous video, Part A, we walked through the setup of a preliminary static stress analysis in Autodesk Inventor. In this video, we continue with the same model and demonstrate how you transfer the simulation model into Autodesk Simulation Mechanical for further analysis. In addition, we will take a look at the ability to manipulate Inventor parameters from within Simulation Mechanical to conveniently produce and analyze variants of the original model. You can open the Inventor model directly from Simulation Mechanical whether or not Inventor is installed on your computer system. Alternatively, you can push the model from Inventor into Simulation Mechanical. Here we demonstrate the second method. From the Simulation tab of the ribbon, click Launch Active Model in the Simulation Mechanical panel. By default, you will see a number of prompts beginning with whether you wish to import Inventor workpoints. We'll choose No because this model either lacks workpoints or we won't be needing them in Simulation Mechanical. Next, decide whether to import Inventor 3D sketches. Again, we'll choose No for this example and for the same reason. A Transfer Options dialog appears. When the presence of simulation data is detected, the defined study or studies are listed here along with a CAD-only model option, that is, without simulation data. We wish to demonstrate the transfer of simulation data and inventor parameters. Recent versions of Simulation Mechanical only import the inventor parameters for the CAD-only model. Therefore, we will activate both options. This setup will cause two separate Simulation Mechanical models to be created. From the Work With menu, choose Static Analysis 1 so that the simulation model is the active file in Simulation Mechanical at the conclusion of the transfer process. Finally, deactivate the Include Midside Nodes in Simulation option for this example. We will be using the default element type and data in Simulation Mechanical, and mid-side nodes are deactivated by default in that program. Click OK to initiate the transfer of the first model. Simulation Mechanical appears, and you are again prompted to specify import preferences. First, decide whether to use the default Simulation Mechanical color palette or to import the incoming part colors from the CAD model. We'll say no to keep the inventor part color. Next, specify whether you want to import part names from the CAD model. This time we'll choose Yes. The CAD-only model briefly appears in the FEA editor and is then closed since the simulation model will also be transferred. The part color and part name prompts appear again, so the CAD model and simulation model can be imported differently if desired. We will choose the same answers as before. The simulation model appears in the FEA Editor environment. Note that the type of analysis is appended to the file name for the simulation model to differentiate it from the CAD-only model. The bearing load and pin constraint are properly imported from Inventor, and they highlight on the model when you point to them in the browser. Also notice that the imported element type is tetrahedron, which is the only solid element type supported in Inventor simulation. We will change that shortly. The stainless steel 440C material has also been imported from Inventor. If you recall from video part A, we took advantage of a feature in Inventor that automatically detects rigid body modes and prevents them. Simulation Mechanical does not have this feature. We will have to ensure that the model is statically stable before solving it. This is the reason that the partial cylindrical surface at the large end of the slot was split in the CAD model. We must first change the view options to make edges visible, as they are hidden by default. Next, we will change the selection mode to select edges. The edge that we want to constrain lies in the global XZ plane of the model, which is a symmetry plane for this model. Geometry constraints and loads are all symmetrical about the XZ plane. Therefore, we expect no displacement in the direction normal to the symmetry plane, in this case the Y direction, for any node located along the symmetry plane. Select the edge. Then, apply a general constraint, fixing only the Y translation, and click OK. The yoke is no longer free to spin about the axis of the small hole but the constrained edge is free to move in the X and Z directions as the part deforms under load. 
Now let's customize the 3D mesh settings. In the surface options, choose the absolute mesh size option rather than defining the mesh size as a percentage of the automatic size. We'll enter 0.09 in the size field, which will ensure at least two elements through the thickness in the thinnest sections of the yoke. Next, let's look at the solid options. As imported from Inventor, the solid mesh type is set to all tetrahedra, which again is the only solid mesh type available in Inventor simulation. Choose the bricks and tetrahedra option, which is the default type of solid mesh for simulation mechanical. This mesh type produces a mesh with predominantly six-side, eight-node brick elements, with the highest quality elements placed at the surface where the structural stresses are the most critical. Lower quality elements are used in the interior mesh to fill the remaining volume, and the mesh is comprised of brick elements, wedges, pyramids, and tetrahedra. Click OK, and then click Generate Mesh. Note that the element type shown in the browser has now been changed from tetrahedra to brick. The model is ready for solving. In the Analysis tab of the ribbon, click Run Simulation. Solid meshing occurs first. Initially, only the surface mesh is completed. The solid or interior meshing process is postponed until the simulation is run by default. Click the Push Pin icon in the output bar to unpin this window which allows the output bar to auto-hide, providing a larger display canvas for the model. When the solution is finished, the model appears in the results environment and the displacement magnitude is initially displayed. Notice the maximum displacement of 0 0.00079 inches which is very close to the results obtained within Inventor. Next, let's look at the von Mises stress results. The maximum stresses occur in the same area as previously witnessed. The maximum value of approximately 9,543 PSI is about 6% lower than the maximum stress calculated in Inventor. Now let's close this model and open the model that was transferred from Inventor without the simulation data. The model we want is the one without Static Analysis 1 appended to the file name. In the Mesh tab of the ribbon, locate the Inventor Parameters command in the CAD Additions panel and click it. The dialog that appears lists all of the features of the model. Expand a feature line to see the parameters used to define the feature. For example, Let's look at the parameters under Fillet 2, which is the fillet between the central portion of the yoke and the two cylindrical portions with the pinholes. There is only one parameter needed to define this feature, specifically D38, which is the radius of the fillet. To increase or decrease the radius, simply enter a new number in the value column and click Update to apply the change to the model. You can also optionally export the changes back to Inventor so that the source CAD model is updated to match the revised simulation model. Click Done when finished. The model must be remeshed if you change the CAD geometry. Then run another simulation to see the effects of the change. The Inventor parameters provide a very convenient means of making design revisions to achieve the desired results without having to edit the model within the CAD program and re-import it into Simulation Mechanical. Recapping, in this course module and these two videos, we've discussed the benefits of performing preliminary analyses in the CAD program and importing the simulation setup data into another FEA program for further analysis. Specifically, we've demonstrated how to apply loads and constraints in Inventor, run a preliminary analysis, and then import the Inventor simulation data into Simulation Mechanical. We provided an example of how to automatically prevent rigid body motion in Inventor and manually provide a constraint in Simulation Mechanical to achieve a statically stable model. Finally, 
we looked at the inventor parameters command for quickly manipulating the model geometry to produce design variants. Thank you for watching.